this video, we're gonna be talking about linear actuators. I'm currently working on a stand-up desk that uses these linear actuators that move up and down. And since I'm waiting for the last coat of finish to dry, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to go through how to wire up a linear actuator and show you guys just how easy it is. A lot of people think these things are really complicated and they're really not. They're actually really simple. If you're building furniture and you want to make things move up and down or side to side or lift up a, a door or anything like that, a linear actuator might be the way to go. These things are really powerful and you can operate them on a little rocker switch. So you might be wondering what exactly is a linear actuator anyways? A lot of people, when they see these things, they think, oh, you, you got hydraulics. You got hydraulics in that desk. Well, these aren't hydraulics. Hydraulics move with fluid, whereas these are electric. So um, basically what you have is you have a 12 volt DC motor which uh, internally turns this big screw in here. And so when the motor turns the screw, the screw then pushes and pulls on this rod. And uh, so they make these in a, a bunch of various different lengths and capacities. This particular model is a 12 inch stroke version. So this rod will extend out 12 inches. And uh, the max capacity on this one is 225 pounds. In the stand-up desk that I'm building, I have two of these things that move the desktop up and down. It has a max load capacity of uh, 450 pounds, which is more than enough that I need for that desk. In this particular uh, actuator over here, it's the same exact make and model as this one. The only difference being this is a 20 inch stroke, whereas this is a 12 inch stroke. So if you start looking for these things, uh, what you'll find is that there's a ton of different manufacturers and suppliers that make these. And uh, they make them in all sorts of different configurations and all sorts of different price points and it kind of makes your head spin. I tested uh, several different manufacturers and suppliers that were all in, uh, I guess, the, the lower end of the price range. And I ended up landing on a company called Windy Nation. They manufacture these to, uh, to move solar panels on rooftops and basically track the sun as the sun moves across the sky. And so obviously I'm not using it for that, I'm using it for furniture, but it just turns out that for my particular application, these are, are perfect. Uh, they were one of the few suppliers that I found that actually make these in black, and I, I really like the black finish on them. I think they go really well with the furniture. Uh, most of the different suppliers and manufacturers that you'll find, um, these are in silver. And I, I tested a few of those and you know, this, the silver didn't really bother me too much. But what did bother me is that the ones that I did test ended up being, in my opinion, too loud. It, even though like if, if you just look at the spec sheet, the spec sheet on this one, I think it's like 40 or 45 decibels, uh, somewhere in there. With other similar manufacturers, they'll have the same exact specs but I still found these to be slightly quieter than some of the others that I tested. Anyway, you might be wondering, what in the world is this board? <laughs> well, uh, we were just at the Twin Cities Maker Fair and we were teaching uh, eight, nine, 10 year old kids how to wire up a linear actuator. So if they look really complicated and difficult, if, uh, if an eight year old can do it, my guess is you could probably do it too. It's, it's really, really simple. We put this board together. Um, I didn't do all the artwork on there. My wife did all the artwork, so uh, you can thank Casey for that. So anyway, let me, uh, let me just show you really quick how this works. Uh, these are our 12 volt DC motors. So if you have a 12 volt power source, that's all you need to run these. So you can run them off, a, uh, I have a, a 12 volt battery right here. Uh, you can run them off a car battery. You can run them off a 12 volt power supply, but I will show you both ways here. I just realized that there's a bad connection in here. So the first time I hooked it up, it didn't work. Um, but now that I know that there's bad connection in there, we can wiggle it around and it will work, I promise you. So we have our 12 volt battery here. I have the red wire connected to the positive terminal on the battery. And um, I'm gonna wire that into the, the red wire or the positive on the actuator. And then I'm going to take the black wire or the negative on the battery and wire that to the negative or black terminal on the actuator. And as you can see, it's not doing anything right now because the actuator has already retracted all the way. So it can't go any further. Um, there's, uh, there's a limit switch inside there. So once, uh, once it, it reaches its maximum retraction, 
uh, it hits that limit switch internally and it cuts the power and so it doesn't do anything. So to make it go the opposite direction, what we need to do is uh, change the polarity. So all we need to do is change the positive to the negative and the negative to the positive. So uh, let's go ahead and do that up here. So I'm going to move uh, the black wire that's uh, on the negative terminal of the battery, hook that up to the red or positive wire on the actuator and do the reverse with the positive to the negative on the actuator. And as you can see, that moved the actuator up. So anytime we want to reverse the direction of the actuator, all we need to do is reverse the polarity. But obviously, we don't want to rewire and do that manually every time. So to get around that, um, that is where we use our toggle switch. So on the board here, I have a, uh, this is what we call a double pull, double throw rocker switch. This one in particular, when you push the button down, it stays down until you put it back in that middle position. I think they call it a continuous rocker switch. But I have another switch right here, uh, which looks identical, but internally uh, it's different. And so this is what... Uh, I normally use on LiftBridge furniture is what they call a momentary double pull, double throw switch. So when you push the button down, it automatically comes back up as soon as you let your finger go. I tend to use these more than this type just because um, with, with this, if you, if you toggle it, the, the actuator is going to keep moving until you manually do that. So for safety reasons, uh, it's better to use the momentary rocker switch as soon as you let go or, you know, if you fell down or something like that, it's not going to keep moving. So just for safety reasons, it's better to have uh, a momentary switch. These switches in particular, they have something that's slightly unique about them. These particular switches, both the one on the board here and the one that I'm holding in my hand, uh, they're both pre-wired to reverse the polarity for you. Uh, so you can see uh, on the back of this switch how there's this terminal on the lower right side that's connected to the, the upper left terminal and the upper right is connected to this lower left terminal. So it kind of makes that, that X pattern on the back there. And what that's doing is that's reversing the polarity uh, when you toggle the switch. So there's basically only four terminals back here. Uh, you connect your power to the top two and you connect your actuator to the middle two and that's all there is to it to wire up the switch. With a normal double pull, double throw switch, they don't have those terminals connected back there. Usually there's uh, just six open terminals and then you would have to manually solder in your, your wires like that as an X or connect the terminals somehow. Now, I like to buy these switches already pre-wired this way just because I like to keep things simple and it's just a lot less fussing around with and there's four terminals you hook your power you hook your actuator up and you're good to go so let's go ahead and wire up this actuator but instead of using the 12 volt battery this time we're going to use this uh, 12 volt power supply that i bought off amazon uh, this particular one is a 10 amp power supply each actuator only pulls a max of two and a half amps so in theory with the stand-up desk, I'm only using two actuators, so I only need a 5 amp power supply. And uh, I actually have one over here. So as you can see, uh, this is a 5 amp. It's considerably smaller than uh, this 10 amp. So you just need a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply to run two actuators for the desk. If you're uh, building the inversion chair, uh, there's three actuators in that chair. So in that case, you do need the 10 amp power supply or seven and a half amps. Uh, so for this, uh, I have to hook up my power. And we should have a little green light here when that comes on, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my red wire to the positive terminal on the power supply and the negative wire to the negative terminal. If you remember, we just need to wire the top two terminals to the power supply. So I'm gonna move positive and negative on there. And now we just have the two middle terminals that I need to connect to uh, the linear actuator. And it doesn't matter the positive or negative here unless you want to reverse the direction. So I'm just going to use two white wires and hook it up. As you can see, it toggled down. 
and now it goes in the opposite direction. So this switch is reversing the polarity and that's all it's doing. We basically have our 12 volt power supply that's wired into our switch, which is wired into our linear actuator and that's it. So that's really all you need. If you had two different linear actuators that you wanted to run in tandem together, uh, you would basically just wire up both linear actuators to uh, those, two term those two middle terminals on the switch. And as long as the load is the same on both actuators, they should raise and lower at the exact same rate. It might not be perfect, but it should be close enough to where it's not an issue, at least with our application with the furniture. If for some reason you did get a, an actuator that is a lot slower than another actuator, that is a situation where you might want to use a, a speed controller. Uh, that's what this is down here. All a speed controller does is it allows you to control the speed of one or more actuators. In the case where you have two actuators that you want to be perfectly in sync with each other, like I said, in most cases they should be in sync, but if you get one that is slower than the other, you can pick up one of these speed controllers and wire it into the faster actuator, and that way all you need to do is turn this knob and you can slow down the faster one to match the speed of the slower one. And so once you get that knob dialed in, it will be, or should be, perfect in sync with the other one. Uh, so let's go ahead and wire this one in. What I'm going to do is just remove the power from the switch, and instead of going to the switch, I'm going to go to the, these two power terminals on the speed controller. These you can't get the polarity messed up. So the positive on the power supply needs to go to the positive terminal on the speed controller and the negative terminal on the power supply needs to go to the negative. So those two red wires are, are wired in there. The two yellow are the output for the actuator. I'll grab two more wires here and I'm going to wire the yellow output wires that are on the speed controller to the power terminals that are on the switch. We're just wiring this in line in the circuit the same way that we had them wired up before. So instead of the power going directly to the top two terminals, now we're wiring a speed controller into it. So the output of that is going back into the input on the, the switch. So now when I flip the switch, you can see that actuator is moving really slow and then I can turn the knob and, and speed it up. So that's really all there is to it. You just have your power supply, your switch, and your linear actuators, and that's all you really need. Uh, in extreme cases, you might need a speed controller, but in most cases, I'd say that you probably don't. Just make sure that your power supply is rated for the number of amps that you're pulling through the system. So keep in mind that each uh, linear actuator pulls at a max two and a half amps. So if you're running two actuators, you want a power supply that is uh, a five amp power supply, at least. Uh, if you're running three or four actuators, you should go with a 10 amp power supply. Also, make sure that the switch that you're running is also rated for the number of amps that you're pulling through the system. In this particular case, this is a 30 amp switch, which is nowhere near the number of amps that I'm pulling through the system. So that's a perfect switch for this application. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, as soon as that desk finishes drying, I am going to take this box of brand new linear actuators and I'm going to uh, install them in that desk. That will be in my next video. So I'm gonna go ahead and put links to all of the, the components that's on this board in the description of the video. And uh, hopefully this was helpful for you guys and we'll check you guys later.